I mentioned that the TFH IR Formula RX-8 series took place at uh, Winton. And I said, we'll wait till Ivan uh, comes into the studio. And, uh, well, you're here, mate. I'm back. So, and <laughs> you've got some stories. We do have some stories. Uh, I think it was a brilliant, uh, another fantastic round for, for Formula RX-8. Uh, being the penultimate round of the championship, it really, the tensions are, are starting to, to show. Mm. You know, um, still fantastic vibe in in the paddock, and you know, drivers are showing tremendous support for one another. But you can just tell that there's a little bit of tension going on, and um, you know, every point counts, and you know, there's um, the, the racing was spectacular. You know, we we had a five car battle right up until the couple of, couple of laps to go in the in the final race of the weekend. Uh, um, we have two new drivers that have landed on the on the podium. Um, with Thomas Derwin and Etienne uh, Filippi. Mm. Um, we've had myself with the best result of the season with, with a second, which we will definitely talk about today. <laughs> um, <laughs> but overall, you know, the, the category has featured um, two primary drivers that have led the way mm. during the championship. Um, you know, unfortunately, Stephen was not able to, to be there at Tail and Bend. And therefore, you know, in terms of the championship, with the problems of Queensland, plus you don't show up for a round, unfortunately, you know, wasn't there to um, battle with them right up until the end, which he would have done. But, you know, we, we started the season with these two clear, faster drivers, and now the, the pack is chasing them, and the pack has arrived, mm. and they don't like it. You know, they, exactly. They're, um, they're not used to this. Well, we saw that with uh, Alec, because Alec, we spoke about this off air when it happened. We... Um, it was amazing to see the reverse grid race. Yes. Because normally we see Brock Payne and Rob Bowden climb their way up, but they couldn't climb up very – they did end up climbing up, but not very easily. No. Uh, which was actually really great to see, and it shows the talent in this field. And we saw Thomas Derwin yes. score his first national win and first win ever uh, with the series. And such a great kid you know it couldn't have happened to a to a better person you know always always there willing to help um spent so much of his weekend helping another fellow competitor because they had engine issues jumps in the car you know like barely does any work to his car and he's able to hold uh hold brock off you know to um to get that to get that first win and it was really really great to see at the same time in that particular race we saw Ayrton get his first podium mm. Uh, we saw mixed weather conditions. We saw a wet race. We saw a dry race. We saw a mixed condition race. <laughs> saw and then everything. We, and then we saw everything. And then we saw a, a final race was a dry race. One thing we didn't see, safety car. We still haven't, that streak is still continuing. We haven't seen safety car. Undefeated. Which is not a yellow flag yeah. and not a safety car in five rounds. And do you know what? It'll be really incredible. And you can put this on a wall. Um, if, if, if the same thing happens at one raceway next weekend for the final round, yes, imagine a season still because normally when you see, like we saw supercars, it was boring because there was no safety cars, yes. However, the RX8 series has been we've seen some really, really incredible driving, incredible racing, yes, and it just shows you don't need a safety car to produce some awesome, awesome action. How did you enjoy race one, the Deviak Vantaggiato show? Oh, <laughs> that, <laughs> we well, okay. Because we're part of you guys, we were nervous as anything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we were like on our toes and biting our nails. But as a race fan and watching back and watching you and um, and Stephen watch back the race, it was that's when you know the result, that's when it was really, really, really cool to see. Yeah. Um, you guys were really, really incredible. You stole the show, um, both of you guys, that race. Uh, I think. What you, was it like for you? You can only do that if you trust someone. You know, you can only go uh, defending for six laps straight against somebody like him, mm. which, you know, he's a bulldozer, you know, like when he wants to come through, he'll come through. Yeah. And as you saw in race four, you know, five overtakes uh, and, you know, just storming through the field when he wants to go through, he will. But uh, tremendous respect with one another. Uh, we do it on our racing on a weekly basis. So we know each other's strengths and weaknesses. 
and he tried you know mm -hmm. like a lot of people in the panic oh you know you were no no he was trying <laughs> he was trying and as um as other drivers learned in the next few races you can't get past very easily around here yeah. um i know where to place the car i know the rules i know i've been i'm it's my first national, but I've been around motorsport and marinated mm. for so many years, and I've been doing so much sim racing and so much <laughs> racecraft. Um, it is, you know, you really, really need to eat your spinach, uh, have a good night rest before you dare to attempt to, to overtake me yeah. because it's going to be hard work. Brock did it in mm. race uh, three in the reverse grid race. Mm. Um, to his credit, I, he was so far back, I didn't think he was going to pull it off, but he did. But it's going to take a huge amount of commitment and a huge risk to overtake me. And, you know, Stephen was willing to try, you know, and uh, around the outside, around the inside, you know. Um, but again, when you know where to place the car and you're roughly there or thereabouts with, with speed, mm. that's what one make production car series makes us so entertaining. That's why we see, you know, um, you know, Toyota 86, uh, you know, be so good, you know, the scholarship series and GI 86. Uh, Overall, you know, like a fantastic battle. We enjoyed it. I aged 10 years uh, during that race. Uh, my mamma mia, I, um, I could just see him. Uh, I knew his intentions. I knew where he was going. And I didn't have the right setup as well, no. which put me, um, you know, through the fast uh, left-hander. Mm. You know, he was so much more dominant. He had so much more mechanical grip. And that put me, you know, that made me struggle. But then we fixed that straight away for the next race. And it felt a lot better. So overall, a huge shout out to, you know, he helped me out so much uh, and I learned so much from that particular battle. Um, but that wasn't it. You know, I mean, we had a fantastic race two in the morning, uh, made a little mistake, ran off into the grass, came back from nine, made my way back to fifth. Did some rallying, yeah? I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I wanted to cut some lawn, you know, like just a bit of high side hustle. Yeah, like that, that bit's a bit too long. Let me just, I'll, I'll, st I'll end my race so I can go. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. but overall, um, we now head to one raceway. Mm. We will crown a champion. It's it's, uh, it's it's that time, and uh, um, you know there are two battles going on. I mean, uh, it is going to be tough for us to to achieve third in the championship, but mathematically, we still can. And as we know, we're racing; anything can happen. Um, just look at all the bad luck that Justin has had, you know, oh, throughout man. throughout the year. Um, not that we wish that upon anybody, but you know, mathematically we still have a chance. And until there's a mathematical chance, we're gonna go out there and, and try and get that third place in, in the championship. It is a brand new track, a brand new layout. Uh, no one's driven on it. So there are no test days. No mm. one can go and test. Yeah, right. So we're all gonna be on the same boat. And I think, yeah, I think the talent is is gonna shine once again. I expect the same usual suspect to be at the front. <laughs> Um, we're all going to be there. Um, I'm just so glad and thankful that our car, um, all the electrical gremlins are gone. We have the same power as everybody. And um, I'm all in. No, I, I can't wait. Yeah, because that really stung. And I hate to, you know, <laughs> bring you back, but you kind of have to. Um, it really stung at the bend at your home race. Obviously, the high oh, of hurt. having your own car and just, you know, you were starting second as well and you just couldn't. Continue, just couldn't you know go we, we went from second to eighth by yeah. turn one you know whereas, whereas wington <laughs> was you, opposite you were always within the top five yes um the whole weekend doesn't and, matter what weather conditions um wet weather race around the outside of bowden mm, and brock that was cool that, <laughs> that was really was, cool you know um yeah like uh, all, all all a race driver wants mm. is an opportunity mm. you know to shine an opportunity to show off their skill and uh, you know we have a platform that allows that to happen but it's still you know you still need power mm. you know like you can't be you know you can't be running on three ignition coils no. and um and still compete with these guys you know you're going to get destroyed you so, can't use a flintstone car you can't pa uh, use your feet <laughs> yeah i mean like um yeah the best way to describe our car at talent bend was like it was a parachute there you know yeah everybody's going this way i'm going that yeah. way but overall um it, it makes you more hungry it makes you more appreciative um, had a huge smile on my face at the beginning of race four, you know, to be right there on the bumper of second place yeah. um, and then overtake second place around the outside of turn one, which yeah. was... <laughs> well, it, it was bound to happen because with the race three, you had, like you said, reverse grid. You had a battle with uh, Ayrton Flippy. 
Yes. The whole race, it was either going to be you or him get on the podium. Yes. So it was going to be epic either way. And I'm glad, I'm really happy that you both managed to get on there at some point. Yes. Because um, Eden, it, it's, it's his home race as well. He did really, really good. He had a little off, I think, uh, in the last race or something like that. Yes. Uh, which was unfortunate, but really cool to see him um, do very well uh, on home soil. And now that you experienced it, First off, how did it? Obviously, we saw how it felt because you're very, you got your your emotion is real pure, and I really love it. You really see it in motor racing. Um, someone you. as passionate as you, and we need more of that. How did it feel? The whole race. Talk me through the race. How did it feel knowing that you know there is a chance that you will be, you know, especially when Rob Bowden made that mistake when you went from third because third was amazing, but to, to get second, yeah, pretty cool. And then. How hungry and how, what have you learned knowing that you can do it? What are you going to do to make sure you do it again at, at one raceway? Yeah, look, I think it's really interesting. I think, you know, the starts are very important. So quickly I was able to go from fourth to third. That was really important. And then I, okay, so I'm, I'm in a podium position now. And then when you are there, you know, you kind of look at the two guys at the front and, you know, r roughly around lap three or four, we were actually bumper to bumper. You know, like there was actually some points in the in the braking zones which I was faster than them, but still very hard to very hard to overtake. And uh, at that point of the race, I felt to myself, okay, I need to now hold uh, Jeff behind me and whoever comes because this is now it. You know, it's the last chance this weekend to get a podium, and I desperately wanted it. Then we sort of um you know get to about lap six or seven when that thing happened. Um, I'm not sure to this day what happened to to Bowden and why he was, it was a moving. Bit weird, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm I'm not sure. I think it may have been cooling. I, I mean, the engine may have been uh, running a bit hot or mm. something. But you know, I was able to overtake around the outside of turn one, and now it's like okay, now I have a buffer. Even if Jeff does go past, I'm still on the podium, so that's cool. So that kind of relieved a little bit. But I um no, I wanted to hold off for second. Uh, Brock built a little bit of a gap, uh, you know, not not too much. But did you did you learn much following him in a race situation? I did, I did, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, uh, having all of them, you know, having Stephen Bowden, uh, Brock being so close to everybody this weekend. Um, you know, we didn't exactly have the right tire pressures towards the end of the race, so our pace dropped. Mm -hmm. Um, I was like, you know, doing Tokyo Drift, uh, coming out of the uh, out of the S tight section yeah. there. But you learn to adapt, you know, like mm. you're just going to accelerate a little bit later, just hold off a little bit. And, you know, um, I've got now a really, really strong understanding of this tire and a really strong understanding of this car. You know, I, I go into the race now, I'm ready. Mm. Like I'm, I'm ready to battle. There's no hesitation. Uh, there's no worry. I'm very relaxed. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very relaxed before the race starts. Um, when the lights go um, go red, I'm very relaxed about what needs to happen next. Mm -hmm. um, I was speaking to my brother that it's actually becoming more like, you know, gamified, you know, like yeah. it's becoming a little bit more, more like racing, more natural. Yeah. It's becoming more like eye racing, you know, you know what's about to happen and mm. you know where you need to place your car. And the most important thing is you need to focus, you know, you need to have a very, very strong uh, uh, concentration and throughout the whole race yeah no no matter <laughs> what results you want to have you know like you need to be very focused corner corner after corner apex after apex and then your race will come to you and um i'm just thankful that i'm, I'm able to showcase my skill my passion mm. um and i'm able to um give people emotions you know the fact that some people were jumping up and down on their couches at yeah. home watching me race yeah. you know um oh, mate, i was i was wow yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was like crazy yeah, and I um and I hope you know that we can go one better. Do I believe? Um, I do still believe that that uh, uh, Bowden and Brock have a little bit on us. You know, there's a, still a couple of tens per lap that they are faster. Can we bridge that gap at one raceway? I hope so. I hope so. Um, fighting for the podium, yes, that definitely. That I'm not. I'm not going there to do anything else. Um, but there is also there is also a championship on the line. And so you do have to be cautious. There is an unwritten rule in motorsport, you know, going into a final round, going into a round where there's going to be a champion decided, you kind of, um, I'm not saying, you know, you want to take it easy on them, but yeah. you're kind of more conscious that these two people are fighting for a championship. Mm. And so you don't want to be the one to ruin it for them. You don't want to be the one to ruin it for them, but you also want to see them, you know, go at it and, you know, yeah, you, yeah. you want to see them um, fight it out. And um, we'll be very, very interesting to see how we handle everything. And uh, there's going to be 
I personally believe it is the round to watch. Mm. If you've ever wanted to watch a Formula X set race, I think this will be it. Mm. Tensions are going to be sky high. Pressure. This is now it. You know, mm. one person will be crowned the champion. No mistakes from the two at the front because there are still mathematically, you know, possibly anything can happen. They can st- if Brock Payne like loses a race and Rob wins, he, he can still really switch around. Yes, yes. Um, but it's um, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, we we will definitely have our say in it. Um, like I said, I'm I'm going all in. I want to win. Mm. Uh, I want to win a race before the end of the year. I think we deserve it. Uh, we've uh, worked so hard. Jason just couldn't believe it, the result that we had at Winton. <laughs> um, but, I think know. that's April. Yeah. <laughs> we were yeah. stoked. Oh, I mean, look, if you went up and down the paddock on a Thursday night yeah. and said, oh, I think Ivan will finish P3 for the round mm-hmm. and we'll finish P2. Yeah. Be, <laughs> well, after the Ben, I suppose. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. But um, no, look, uh, it's been a great year. Um, we got so many new updates uh, to to give people as well. Um, there's some big news coming. Very exciting news, very, especially for next year as well. Yeah, massive, massive. Yeah, we 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 have some very very big news coming up, and uh, I'm super excited. You know about it uh, already. You will soon. Yeah, so, yeah you so will. Make sure you tune. You will tune soon. <laughs> Let's just say it's a it's a big, big yeah, news. It's not small. It's, it's, it's uh, <laughs> massive. Yes. Um, um, yeah. No. Very <laughs> very very proud, and uh, um, yeah, a huge thank you to uh, to everybody that supports. And uh, a huge thank you to yeah to everybody that that tunes in, likes, comments, um, all the haters. You know, there's just so much energy from you guys. Um, you know, I love it. Um, you know, it's interesting. I, I had one particular post uh, before the weekend yeah. started, and it said, uh, "Hey, you know, we're three hours out from arriving. Mm-hmm. You know, supporting SA." And out of like, I don't know, 60 or 70 likes yeah. of everybody supporting, it was one person with a laugh emoji. <laughs> And it's just, and it's just so funny because you sit there going, um, anything? <laughs> would you care to comment? Care to comment now? Yeah. Uh, anything you'd like yeah. to add? Um, yeah, it's uh, but that's social media. You know, you gotta accept her. You yeah. gotta accept her. But uh, no, it feeds me. It Look, feeds me. you gotta laugh at her and use it as energy. You, you don't let it beat you up. Because um, um, I, I get a lot with even my supercar post, even though I'm not driving, but I get supercar haters um, <laughs> complain about simple things. I just that's when you know. You, you're doing all right. Yes. When yeah, you, yeah, when yeah, you yeah, get yeah. people like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you live rent free in somebody's mind, it's a it's a great thing. That's it. Especially any 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 time rent is free, especially in this day and age. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, but no, look, um, <laughs> um, very uh, very excited for one raceway, uh, last opportunity to for all the drivers to shine, and then um, a huge off season. Mm. You know, um, in general for us. Uh, we will probably do more work in the next six out, six months after the season's over than all the work that we've done this year. You know, there's uh, so much preparation uh, to go into 2025. Uh, so many new announcements, uh, so many th- new things arriving to Slipstream. And um, I can't wait. It's going to catch everybody by surprise. It's going to be epic. So make sure you tune in to Let's Talk Motorsport, Slipstream Autosport on social media, and obviously the uh, – the studio as well, Radio Italiana. Um, but also one thing before we wrap up the show, um, Formula X8 made a new a recent uh, deal with uh, Hyper Racer X1 in the Australian Drivers Championship uh, that the Rookie of the Year, now, by the way, the Drivers Championship, win, the, the championship winner of the Formula X8, I'm pretty sure, I, I think that's still going the Trans Am deal with yep. Todd Hazelwood. Yep, so um, TA2 uh, test drive mm. um, with TFH. Yeah, that's really cool. And obviously... Bathurst winner, Todd Hazelwood now, which you can say. Uh, so you get to spend a day with him. However, the rookie of the year will get a test drive in the brand new Hyper Racer X1 open wheeler. So They're good. so sick. They're so they cool. are so good. Um, we saw them uh, live at Taylor Bend, and mm. they are absolutely spectacular. Um, very strong grid, mm. uh, very competitive racing, a lot of them being sold overseas now. So I expect them to be, yeah, an up and coming international championship in the, in the not too not too distant future. And again, it just goes to show the effort that Formula X8 is going, you know, to give people opportunities. And uh, yeah, we just we just couldn't be happier. Yeah, and, and you kind of forget it's the first year. It is the RX8 series, the yeah. first year, and they're already pulling off a Trans Am deal and a, uh, an open wheeler deal, which is actually an affordable Formula car, which is fantastic. It's what you want. Yes. Um, but anyway, that is the end of our show. Thanks for listening, whether you're listening on Radio Italiana or Spotify and YouTube. 
Uh, if you do enjoy us and you want to see more and catch up with us as well, check out our social media. If you go to our, uh, just search up Let's Talk Motorsport, it's a yellow icon. So it's up Slipstream Autosport on, on their socials as well. And ltmotorsport.com. Uh, ltmotorsport.com as well for all your latest motorsport news. Um, all of this information from the race weekends are also on there for you to have a read as well. But uh, thanks, Ivan, for joining me once again in the my studio. Pleasure. Unfortunately, Alex isn't here, but hopefully we're all together next week. But uh, my name is Daniel, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye see you next now. time.